Hi. So today I'm going to show you how I image 8-inch floppies. As you may know, I'm a big fan of the TRS-80 Model 2 and Model 16 line of computers that were produced by Tandy Radio Shack back in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, and part of being an enthusiast of these machines is rescuing uh, software. And what do I mean by rescuing? Uh, is that the fact that the software for these machines was released on 8-inch floppies. Uh, all of these machines had 8-inch floppy drives. Uh, so, given that the fact that the age of the software is coming on 40 years, uh, it's imperative for us to try to uh, save it in a uh, persistent format, the software. Um, because the original 8-inch floppy media degrades over time. Uh, the degree of that degradation depends on various factors, such as uh, environmental conditions, you know, maybe it was stored in an attic with alternating high heat and cold cycles, which will cause the media to degrade significantly. It may have physical damage, it may have been used extensively throughout its life. Um, it may have been stored in a humid environment like a basement and will have mold growth on the media itself. So lots of reasons that this media degrades over time. Um, so. You know, a lot of the, the, the floppies that I get are in bad shape, and a lot of them are unreadable. But a lot of them are still salvageable at this time. So, that's why I'm performing this task. Uh, so, let's talk about the uh, equipment that I use. So, we can start with the imaging PC. So, this is a circa 1996 PC with Windows 95 installed. And the reason we're using Windows 95, I'll explain in a minute, but some of the hardware we'll talk about is I have it, it has a hard drive with uh, Windows 95 on it, but also the second hard drive on a compact flash card right here to this ID adapter. And the reason I use that is so I can easily transfer the uh, images that we create between this antiquated imaging PC and uh, my modern uh, MacBook. Pro, for instance, so I can share the files, store them, archive them, uh, whatnot. Uh, we also have some additional cards in this machine that you would, wouldn't find in a standard PC from 1996. We have one here. This is a Cat Weasel card. The Cat Weasel card is a, uh, a floppy controller card, uh, which is used for various platforms. Uh, significantly for the TRS-80, it is very useful because it creates mixed density uh, floppy disks. Uh, we also have another card here. This is an Adaptex SCSI card. And you can see I'm not using the SCSI portion of this controller. But the, what's nice about these cards is they also came with a floppy controller. And the floppy controller that's on this card is superior to the built-in floppy controller on the motherboard because it also understands mixed density formats. Okay. Um, so, uh, particularly for the 8-inch imaging, because I also do 5 and a quarter imaging, you can see I have a couple of 5 and a quarter drives here hooked up to my cat weasel. For the 8-inch imaging, this 34-pin floppy uh, bus cable is connected to this adapter here. Okay, this converts the 34-pin cable to a 50-pin cable that's used by the 8-inch floppy drives. Now, this is an adapter uh, uh, I obtained from DBIT, and the reason we need a special adapter is because there are additional signals on an 8-inch floppy bus that are not on the 34-pin floppy bus uh, that are needed for the 8-inch floppy controller to operate. So we follow the 50-pin cable over to our 8-inch floppy drive. And you can see I have the floppy, couple 8-inch floppy drives here in a uh, open TRS-80 Model 2 disk expansion unit. Uh, this is what the unit actually looks like when it's in working condition and sealed up. So it was produced uh, for the Model 2 as a, a three-disk expansion bay that you would connect to your machine so you could have up to four 8-inch floppy disks. 
Um, the reason I use one that's open is because as part of imaging, we're doing a lot of swapping of drives in and out, and we need uh, access uh, access to the floppies themselves internally, because primarily because what we need to do is clean the heads. And what do I mean by that is I'm going to zoom in here, and you can see there in the middle that white circle with the black line. I'm trying to get into focus here, but it's a little hard because I'm up there. It is. That is the floppy read head. Okay, that's what makes contact with the eight-inch floppy media to read the information off of the disc. Um, so the problem with these old discs is because the media is degrading. Uh, the media tends to flake off on the head um, as it's as it's being read, and what this does, this is affects the readability of the the head itself. Um, so we need to keep that head very clean, and what we end up doing is having to clean that head pretty much between every disc read to ensure we get optimal reads of the uh, subsequent discs. And how we do that is we use some alcohol and cotton swabs. And I'll show you how we do that really quick. So we grab a cotton swab. We go in and gently clean the head itself. Okay. You want to get any remnants of floppy media off of that head. Nice and clean. Okay, well, we'll start with the clean head. All right. uh, I also want to just quickly show you the software that we use for imaging that runs on the uh, PC. Uh, this is called Image Disk, created by a fellow named Dave Dunfield. It's specifically used for imaging uh, older floppy drives and creating digital formats in them or creating floppy, actual floppy images from the digital format, so it goes both ways. And it runs on DOS, MS-DOS, which is the reason we use a Windows 95 PC, because it has a true version of MS-DOS. Uh, so we'll just show you how we set up for imaging our 8-inch floppies. Uh, first we'll do is turn on the floppy drive. Okay. And then we'll go, we have to make a few settings changes. So we have to set the cylinders to 77, and we're going to set the sides to 1, and double step as well. Okay. Setting is set. We're going to press R to read. We're going to give the disk a name. And uh, we're just going to call this one because we're going to be reading Pascal disk here. And then you can enter some additional comments that will be put in the, uh, the images header. So when people come across your images, you can add descriptive metadata here, which describes what is on the image itself. I'll fill that in later. And now we're ready to insert the disk to read. Okay. So the disk we're going to read today, I have over here, uh, you can see I have a stack of uh, floppies here. Um, uh, this one on top is mine, but the other two come from uh, other folks. I offer a service where people will send me their 8-inch uh, floppies and I'll image them for them. Um, so you can see I kind of have an inbox here of software waiting to be imaged. But the one on top is what we're going to image right now. is something I purchased recently. Uh, and it's a really rare piece of Model 16 software, Pascal 2. I can't wait to start playing with this, um, but the uh, first thing we're going to do is create a digital image of it. Okay, so get the disc out of here. This is a single disc package. Okay, so here. Uh, one of the things we do as part of imaging is we uh, scan the, uh, the manuals as well and include that in the archive, so I'll be scanning this at a later time because having the software is not very useful without the manuals. Let me set up here for now. Okay. And so one of the first things I do 
is I examine the disk itself physically. Almost all of the software for the Model 2 Model 16 was released on single-sided media. Uh, so in single-sided media, the head reads from the opposite side of the label. So we want to ex examine this side of the media. And physically, uh, we can see some light scratches, but it looks in pretty good condition. So it's been read a number of times, but it's been stored very well. Uh, no signs of mold, no signs of degradation, really, of the media itself. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put this in the floppy drive. And we're going to start reading. Speaking noise, which you'll hear a little floppy occasionally. You can see the head stepping as it's reading each track of the floppy. You can see the image disk software proceeding track by track. It'll do a read and then an analysis to verify that it correctly read the data on each track. So far, so good. Oh, so that it had to re-verify one track there. Hopefully that's the only hiccup we obtain here. Sometimes you have to reread the disk multiple times to get a clean lead. It really gets tricky at the upper tracks because that's the small part of the disk, so the data is more tightly encoded than that part of the disk. Excellent. Successful read. Now Pascal 2 will live in perpetuity. Take this out. Throw it away. So that's how we image 8-inch uh, floppy media. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch. Bye.